There are actually water in here. I did leave the hatch open. Ow! The fiberglass is very sharp. It is hot. Very, very hot. I'm not sure if it's possible to do the glassing work I should absolutely have done today. I guess the temperature is about 28 at least. That should make about 50 degrees inside the boat. I will definitely try. I can wait till tonight and see what is possible to do. Back in the yard again. It's still hot. It's now afternoon. Hotter than the entire history of hot. We are going to grind to clean the area down here and try to putty. If that is possible to do. I've uh, put the putty down here to have it stored in as cold a place as possible around here. We are done with the putty in. It looks okay. After all, in here. There is an emergency, a possible emergency coming up. And uh, we have been warned by the neighbor of the cabin up in the mountains that the fire alarm is on. And uh, it's possible that uh, we will have a fire. Having had this warning, I have to go to the cabin to check it up. I will just have to see. We're at the cabin and we can hear the fire alarm is going off. I have investigated, there is nothing hazard, hazard use. There's nothing wrong here. I had a long tour for nothing, but uh, it's way better than the cabin being on fire. I obviously need to change this. That's garbage. Back in the harbor again. It's Monday and it's, of course, this raining. There are things to do. Now it's time to grind the pate to a nice curve and uh, make ready to fiberglass. Let's see how far we can get today. It's quite late, unfortunately. So, what has happened here? We can see there are actually water in here and I prefer that the water is left outside the hull. I did leave the hatch open all day yesterday and it was raining but that should not have entered this size unless it was raining sideways very hard which it didn't. And we can see there is a strip down here and it seems that there is an old hole from a bolt that's actually leaking. That's not good at all. And I was going to grind this today, but it's all wet now. All right, um, this was not good, but I will keep on. I will not break down. As it gets more and more cramped aboard the boat, getting more difficult for me to film, actually. Trying this when I work. I will try my best and I will do an experience. experiment. Ah.
That was not bad at all. We might be able to work with this. Then it's this getting this grinded just a little bit. Then I'm ready to grind with this excellent camera. On top of my head, I look really, really smart. All I do for you. So, time will tell if I am able to keep the camera steady. Ow! Fiberglass is very sharp. It will easily cut the skin open. This machine is way, way better than I thought it was. All right, now it's late, time to go home. After using the camera on the head earlier, I reckon that it's really hard to avoid the movements and that's not good. I feel a little bit seasick. So I will postpone that way of video taking Back in the boatyard again, and it's a nice day, it's colder. I really can feel the fall is coming on, pushing to give space and room for the winter to come. Then we are about ready to gloss. We have done the glossing strips will know just degrees and then start mixing the polyester let's start i've always been a sucker for using things until they are worn out i'm curious if i should change this now it's starting to become very heavy and very inaccurate in the measurements that's a lot of polyester, right? Okay, done uh, glossing for this time. It has been raining in Norway, in Bergen, a lot. And my working shoes, apparently in good condition, is soaking water from underneath. There is no heel left, and when I'm walking outside, I'm pumping water into the shoe. That means it's uncomfortable, but also that I keep pumping water out into the boat when I'm walking inside. Introducing the next pair of working shoes, Yes, very good, very worn and excellent. Got this from my mother and it's the last pair she bought me before she died. Better than throwing them away as they are quite worn. I will now use them as working shoes. <laughs> Back in the incredible messy garage and we are ready to cut some hatches into these plates. These are floor in the galley and the seating on the little coach in, in the bow section. And we wish to cut these openings also here. And um, that should be no big deal, I guess. I wish to round off the corners. Okay, let's go ahead.
So after making an opening with this saw, this saw, then we can see that it fits more or less the saw. Then I just continue. Let's do that. This tight angle actually require a thinner blade. Let's find that. And here we can see the difference between the very thin blade, which is excellent for curves. And we will change to that blade now. When making these and placing them, I must take into consideration that the wall will rest upon a strip of plank all the way here. So I can't place it too close as it will be too narrow for it to fit. Just ensure, just, just ensure, just in case. And we are ready to go to the boat to proceed with gluing with epoxy and prepare to install. Excellent. Now I need to make something that the floor can rest on. Let's start. <laughs> of course it is raining so we need to progress the work can't stop if we were to stop when it was raining in Bergen then nothing would have gotten done uh, and then it rains even more are you okay? <laughs> sorry It's hard to get the screws through the fiberglass, so I find it smart to pre drill. Only necessary when um, there is fiberglass. I don't really need very much because most of it will squeeze out anyway, so. I'm not going to waste one, just adding a thin layer. Mm -hmm. 
Then we have attached the top of this encasing and I guess we just proceed with the floor in the galley. Then we are done with gluing this wall in the galley and we will now let the epoxy cure. Let's see tomorrow. We are back in the yard again and Boatman John is here to take some measurements for the teak. This is for the teak fender list. Very exciting. I'm on my way to the summer house to have a good cleanup of the the sun uh, sun deck i guess it's called the brewery room again and today we will bottle this beer um, it is October and obviously that means that we have to have a Germany uh, inspired beer and we have this uh, beer called Tisch Pilsner I guess it's uh, German Lager can we say Lager I think it's Lager so you might be wondering Helge aren't you at the cabin and uh, oiling the, the deck? The answer is yes. But you know, in life, sometimes there's just too much to do. And you have to be several places at the same time. Luckily, I had Sarah, Sarah with me today. What do you think, Sarah? About? About anything. Democracy is in danger. This is a Hobbit book. So. I'm at the cabin up in the mountains and I have just borrowed this machine and I will use that to make holes to attach these metal things it's for of course installing wooden planks and attach them to the, the mountain fall is coming and winter of course is approaching and we need a safe and a viable passage to this cabin even when it's snow so Let's start. Okay, we're going to mix this stuff, which is a very rapid and strong concrete, and it will cure within very few minutes. So I have to 
make it as close to the holes as possible to blend it and mix it up. Yes, because this one, this is really fast. More than enough. Yes, it is. The holes are done, I think. I might create some more holes. This was really a swift operation. The machine was fantastic. Back in the harbor again. I've been working a lot on uh, the summer uh, cottage and uh, cabin up in the mountains lately and I still have some work to do and that affects the progress of the boat. Uh, anyway, let's get aboard and see how the result of last work is. Finally, we have a great floor to step onto. It's just lovely and it's strong. Look at this. Yes, not bad. This is an old staircase from uh, the previous setup in this fissure. And it was uh, used for just the same purpose, to get from galley and up till the pilot house. It's very easy to bang the head so i'm wondering if i should do a little cut out so this would get a little bit further in to the pilot hose floor in that way we could avoid hitting the head so next should be this wall uh, for the galley i would very much like to set that up and I'm also thinking, oh, here we are missing these. Let's do that first. It's not a huge amount of space, but it is space to sit on. And that's good. It's comfortable. It's a good place to put your clothes in the evening. You can just step up and get into the bed. I was thinking about having a little wall up here, just not too high. And for that to have the possibility to collect small things in here. That's a possibility. And of course, it will further strengthen the hull, of course. Before installing this i need to plan how to get the wires uh, to the bow thruster the wire that will uh, steer the bow thruster to to make it go to to starboard or to port from the steering position that's a control cable and uh, that need to be thought about and i will not leave it just in the bilge because that's not the great future for for that wire this will be the steering position there will be a lot of electric equipment. What if I drill a hole down here and leave this underneath and all the way forward to the boat thruster? If I seal it in here, in there, and I also seal it in here, and it going up here, that should be a watertight way to, to transport the cables to the boat thruster room. Imagine if I have also done a similar angle as this one. It would mean that this wall would be about that. I would not have lost very much here. But imagine the galley. I would have a lot of more space. I would have done that differently if I had seen that. This is why I did build the dummy interior in the beginning. 
and I saw a lot of things that I know have built and like, but I didn't see this one.